Good morning, HVAC friends. We are at a uh, donut shop here in Pineville, Louisiana. It must be uh, rude and ream week for me because that's about all I've worked on this week so far. Um, yesterday I wanted to do some video, but I didn't get to. Um, I repaired two refrigerant leaks on two ream slash rude units. I'm not sure what name they were. It was one or the other. One of them was right here. There was, a, there was a hole because somebody changed the compressor and they didn't strap up their lines coming off the compressor and the wire rubbed against the hot gas discharge line and busted a hole in it. Then the second one I went on, I repaired a leak right here under this factory 90 right here. It had a pinhole leak. And now today, this donut shop's got two roots, and they're complaining that this one's not cooling, but I'm still, I got the S-Mans on here, and I'm, if I'm not mistaken, th these roots call for a 10 degree subcool. They, these units are running TXVs, so that would show me that this thing is overcharged. Um, Dallas, you're the Ream Rude man, so let me get your help on this, buddy. This unit is a... UAND-060JAZ as you can see there manufactured in 2007 of two, this uh, July of 2007 R22 refrigerant so I'm going to go through this system and uh, see what I can come up with but uh, that subcooling is really high I don't think uh, subcooling is supposed to be that high on these units so uh, let me uh, dig around and see what I can find. Okay, what I got going on so far is I've got the unit shut down right now. I found a dirty evaporator and I was afraid of that. It's in a closet and I can get underneath the return. So I'm gonna attempt to clean it in place and see what happens. And then uh, we'll see what the pressures and the superheat and subcool looks like after that. So uh, I'll get back to y'all. Okay. The evaporator is clean and she's back up and running. And as you can see, we're gonna be quite overcharged because somebody came over here and said, oh man, it's Lone Freon. Yeah, you know, the, the suction line is not beer can cold, so let's go ahead and juice them up when it was just a fact of the evaporator was dirty. Now see right here, it Ream and Rude don't say on the door. I'm look, I, I, without knowing, I'm gonna go for ten. Well, that's way too much. Um, Dallas, if I'm wrong about that, buddy, please let me know. I want to say I talked to uh, Ream at one time, and that's what they told me it was. But the evaporator's clean, and we're gonna be greatly overcharged here. So we're gonna reclaim some of this refrigerant and get this thing running like it's supposed to be. So for any HVAC rookies out there, um, like I said, I don't consider myself a teacher, but here's a tip. Don't slap your gauges on a unit and put your hand on the suction line and assume that it's low just because it's not cold, because that crap doesn't work, okay? Use your superheat and your subcool, and you know, if it does look like that, go check the evaporator and make sure it's not plugged up like this one was before you start overcharging a system. So, I'm going to go get the jug and reclaim, and I'm going to shoot for 10 degrees of subcool. Okay, guys. All right, y'all. That's just about all to do it for the donut shop. Um, subcooling looks much better. It's at, it's bouncing. You know, it, it's going back and forth between, between 10, 11, and 12. See, as you can see now, it's wanting to start dropping. It'll go back down to 11. See, it down to 11. And it'll, it'll go down. To, it, it's fluctuating, but that's your TXV working. So I'm pretty happy with that subcool. Suction pressure looks good. Superheat looks good. Uh, the TXV seems to be working just fine. But, um, you know, all this was was a uh, another company coming out here and throwing their gauges on it. Um, like I've told Zach and Fritz on the phone, um, they, they don't know what superheat and subcooling is. They just throw their gauges on here. They stick their hand on the suction line. They saw a low suction due to the uh, dirty evaporator. The line wasn't cold. 
So they just loaded them up with refrigerant till the line got cold and they, you know, hauled ass. And uh, they still didn't do the customer no good. So my dad had done some plumbing work over here and we ended up picking up the air conditioning too. This is the first time I've ever done the air over here though. Um, and I come over here and, you know, I find a dirty evaporator and now you can see the difference from earlier. So, um, it just goes to show guys, take your time. Um, don't, don't come to a conclusion. Um, the gas and go days are over. Um, beer can cold, that doesn't work guys. You know, it, it doesn't work. So don't try it. If you don't understand superheat and subcool, um, you can watch us on here. We're, we're, and I mean, I'm not a great teacher. I don't consider myself a teacher. Zach is very good at explaining things. He's explained superheat and subcool several times in his videos. He's a good guy to watch. So is Fritz and everybody else on here. Um, I hope I'm doing anybody any good on here. But that's it, guys. You know, just when you go on these jobs, take your time. Act like it's your house. Now, act like it's your grandma's house. You know. Take your time, do the job right, and you'll you'll keep a happy customer. And that's I'm gonna that's enough preaching for me today. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, this one's good to go. Thank y'all so much for watching my videos, and uh, we'll see y'all we'll see y'all on the next one.